Hi, I'm Mario. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the WEN 4212 drill press. Uh, this is actually more of a preview. Uh, poor planning and execution uh, led to a number of failures. Um, forgetting to format the memory card and the camera uh, and running out of space. Uh, working in tight corners, accidentally hitting the stop record button when I picked up the camera. Um, however, I couldn't reshoot the video simply because half of the video or part of the video was removing it from the box and assembling it. So um, I hope you can get something out of this. Uh, constructive criticism is always welcome. If you have any questions, please leave them below. The video is a little bit long. This is going to make it about a minute longer, and I do apologize for that. Uh, thanks for watching. Hey everyone, today I'm going to be looking at the uh, WEN 4214 12-inch drill press. Uh, I originally bought the, uh, the 4208, which is the 8-inch, but um, the shaft here, where you can see in this picture, even with the uh, chuck off, was quite a bit wobbly, um, which wasn't normal. Also, the motor, um, I couldn't push it any further to release the belt, so I couldn't even adjust the belt. Maybe it was because the belt was new and hadn't stretched. Um, I was disappointed disappointed because um, I picked uh, $58 for it at Home Depot during Christmas with the $5 coupon. So it's really cheap money. Um, the only uh, drawback I saw was that it only had a 2-inch uh, throw on the drill press itself. Uh, I returned it and I was thinking about getting another one. I decided not to. Um, and then uh, I came across the 4214. Uh, this is a 12-inch press. Uh, uh, 4212 sorry it's a 12 inch press I think it has a 3 inch throw has a laser on it don't know if it's going to be any, any good or not um, and it only goes for like 270 close to 280 on Amazon and it's not even covered under Prime uh, I was able to get this uh, they kept the price for 199.50 plus tax and that's kind of a bargain for this from wherever I said the carton itself um, it's about uh, 20 inches from side to side uh, 12 inches tall and 30 inches deep. It says it weighs um, 95 pounds, but I kind of question that. So I'm going to go through this step by step. It's probably going to be a long video. Um, if you want, you could skip towards the end or middle during assembly. But uh, I'm going to pop open the box and uh, show you the parts. Be right back. Okay, so I just tore the box open. Here we have a manual, um, the base. I apologize for the shaky camera. Actually, the base isn't too heavy. I expected it to weigh more, but um, some brackets. These must be for the table right here because it does have a, a slide out on it. Let's see if I can't get this out with one hand. Of course not. There we go. Put that there. I'm running short on room, building a little table workbench for my daughter here. Uh, brackets I'm assuming go with that and these look to be uh, a wrench the levers for the uh, drill press to, to raise and lower the uh, the chuck also this uh, drill press what's nice about it is it does not use uh, pulleys to adjust the speed it's actually just a lever that changes the speed and when I heard that, although I've never seen the inner workings, it makes me think of like a, a CVT transmission where it's just kind of variable. Uh, the main unit, which that is pretty hefty looking, and um, the shaft itself, that's pretty big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go grab some tools and uh, I'm going to start to put this together. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Stand by. So I am going to take my time assembling, it might annoy some of you, but I want to see how good the manual is. I already started taking out the hardware out of the bag. It's empty. Take the bottom plate out. This does look quite a bit bigger than the 8 inch model I got. I hope I didn't uh, bite off more than I can chew with this thing. But it's good to be over to have more than what I need. Because you never know. Um, flip through the book. And first things first, it wants me to place the column on, which that's pretty self explanatory. So I'm going to pull that out of the box. Bottom bag off. 
notice it says one cent. It actually was a one cent. That was the price uh, when I brought it to Sears for replacement. I, um, I had the ratchet maybe for 20, 30 years and I broke it. And, uh, the one cent replacement say one cent. Uh, here's the gear set. It's on the right side. This is to raise and lower the table. doesn't seem to show any washers which is interesting. Um, it does come with a wrench here but uh, I'm gonna use my socket and ratchet there. So hopefully I don't get in the way of the camera for you. Um, while I'm doing this, not to bore you, we're just putting in some bolts. On the 4208 model, there were a couple of things that I liked about it. It was small, cheap for $58. Um, and, uh, you know, when seems to be a popular brand, I hear mixed reviews. I also hear it's the same as, like, uh, not Grizzly, the name is escaping me. But, you know, there's only so many manufacturers of these things, and a lot of them are, are rebadged. So. Um, one thing the 4208 didn't have is it didn't have this crank gear set here to go up and down. Um, is that the most important thing to have? I don't know necessarily, but it's uh, it's there. Again, I paid $58 for it. And uh, this one was, you know, almost four times as much. Is it worth four times as much? I don't know, but if I need to drill something more than a two inch hole, do I really want to hassle? Or do I want to just get things done? So, uh, other things the 4208 didn't have, um, again, was the crank, uh, which can make things easier. I also couldn't, um, you know, adjust the pulleys as I mentioned. When I pull out the other motor for this new one, I will bring that up. I'll also probably power this up without the chuck installed because that's where I ran into the problem last time. I'm going to have to repackage it and bring it back. I ordered it from Home Depot online and um, I was unlucky. I lived no close enough to a Home Depot. I was able to return it and they asked me what the problem was. I explained it a couple of times. And I almost ordered a new one that were going to honor the price, but I figured I wasn't going to do it. Originally, I wanted to borrow my father's. He has a maybe a 30 year old Craftsman, uh, probably similar, maybe a 10 inch base model. And uh, unfortunately, it was stolen. So um, that kind of threw that out. They say this weighs 90 pounds, but I guess when it's fully assembled, we'll know for sure didn't feel that way in the box. Um, even though the box doesn't appear to be uh, well padded, I didn't see any problem with anything in the box. So, crank this, I'll tighten this up again later. Uh, now it wants me to put on the table lock lever. I'm going to take these out of the way so I don't lose them. Actually, I'm probably going to need one right now. And this is going to need to be tightened with the Allen key. So. Okay. Try the key this way to go a little more torque. It's only plastic, I don't want to tighten it too much. And I'm going to leave this plastic on here for now because it's just really going to make a mess otherwise. Um, drill press, so I'm already putting the, the head on. That's going to be the heaviest part. Make sure the uh, camera is in focus. Or actually, let me throw the table on next.
well greased. And slide up. Now this uh, roller, which seems to be nice, you could put a bigger workpiece on there. Um, seems to be uh, pretty nice. I don't know if it's going to come in use, whether I'll use some sort of a, a small sled or a larger sled. Uh, it now wants me to put the handle on there that tightens. It's right here. I don't know if uh, you can see that. This will tighten the table and keep it from moving around. One thing I wish this had was a similar type of bolt for um, the, the tilt. Right now, if you want to tilt, you could have used a regular wrench or something. I guess it's not the end of the world, but if at some point I need to do 45 degrees or, well, any type of angle for that matter, uh, it might become a pain. So right now the spins, crank it a little bit. It's still spinning, but I'm sure after I tighten it a little bit more, it's going to stop to move. I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. Then I'm going to leave the plastic on. I'll take it off towards the end of the video. And I'm going to see if this is in focus. I'm going to have to raise this just a little bit. Bear with me. I'll probably move it back. I'm tight for space in here. Hopefully I don't trip and hurt myself. Alright. Next step. Specifically, they want to put the motor housing on top. That's going to be the most fun part. And for that, I guess I'm going to take the top off and get the motor ready. So not only does this have a laser, but uh, it looks like it has a work light. I guess I forgot about that. So let me get this in an easier position. Probably would have been better if I had taken off the plastic. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Now I'm going to end up taking this off anyway. So, line front to back. This is pretty close right now. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to tighten these two Allen bolts right here with the big Allen key that's included. What I'm going to do right now is to shift the drill press over. Reason why is I have a sawhorse here and I want the center to be right over there to carry most of the weight instead of the to the plywood. The other thing this drill press has, which you may not be able to see is right now, is a digital readout. So you can easily tell the speed of, uh, let me see if I can get this over here so you can see, digital readout of the speed of the press. And raise this a little bit more. And I guess I'll take this off. Might as well. Everything else is coming off. Kind of curious about this. It hasn't started tightening up yet. I'll deal with that a little bit later. Um, there should be a second one of these, which is right here. This looks to be identical, and this is to hold the table in place. And I think I know where I went wrong. 
the other one. It's like an idiot. I put it on the wrong side. What not to do. Apologize for the beeping. I think the keys in my pocket set off the alarm in the car. Do what I just did. Put this in the wrong side. I thought from the picture I saw otherwise, but I'm obviously wrong. And same thing with this side. I got that on the right side. Crank it up and you can hold it in place where it is. Slide out table. I'll get a close up of that later. Uh, next thing I want you to do is put the three handles on. Now there's a total of four handles. One is for the speed, so I'm just going to compare the size. If you can look here, one of these is actually longer, I mean, more shorter than the others. So I'm going to screw these in place, and I forgot I needed a wrench for that to tighten them. But I want to bet it came with the wrench just the right size, they came with like a multi purpose wrench I showed you earlier so it's not just for the base it is for I don't know if you could see that the handle so I'm going to be lazy and use this which doesn't seem to want to fit hmm. it's one it's just, it just might be the paint on the tool itself. I'm just going to use a little more force, that's all. Yeah, that's all. Just don't like it because it slips. Alright, well, that's slipping. They're all slipping now, so the wrench is junk. I guess, what do you expect? Okay. Next thing, I'm going to put on the other side, and I am going to detach the camera. It's pretty much the same as all the others, but just in case you want to see. So while uh, moving the camera, I accidentally bumped the, uh, the record button and it stopped recording. Hopefully it uh, wasn't too important, but uh, here's this one. This lever for the speed adjustment. tool that doesn't work worth a, you know, what. I didn't realize how difficult it is to actually film yourself while uh, trying to do something. Usually I just have it on the tripod. Um, well, that's fine for now, and uh, the lever's hard to move now, but in any case, they have a screw here. I don't know if I'm going to take it out in this video, but that's where the whole assembly is. I guess they don't want you going in there at all. So I'm going to put this back on the stand. So focus more on the top at this point. Um, next steps, let's see if there's anything important here. Well, everything's important. Uh, mount the drill press LED bulb. Uh, they want this drill press mounted to something secure. I don't have that right now. I'm going to be making a stand, but it'll probably sit on the floor for the time being. So that's probably okay. Um, a couple of things I didn't know what this was right here. And then I was reminded a quick look at the video. Uh, once you put the chuck in, if you want to remove it for any reason, um, you know, for a better one or whatever. This is actually a tool that you wedge in there to actually remove the old chuck, the chuck that comes with it. Uh, it does come with a couple other pieces, a couple of wing nuts here, but uh, I don't see it uh, mentioned. Um, in fact, in the book, I, wing knobs, yeah, that helps. Uh, I don't see it being used anywhere in any of the diagrams. There's two of them, so how much you want to bet? And I don't see it there. 
but they probably go underneath here to hold this in place. I'm sure if I went further into the manual, instead of jumping ahead, it would have explained that. Boom, smash the head. Again, these are wing nuts. It's better than bolts anyway. Um, to mount under the table. Let's see, you can still see the table there. Screw them in until they hit tight, and then I'll just back it off a little bit. Back it off. While I'm at it, I'm going to raise the table. So it's in frame. It's also going to raise the center of gravity on this thing. Okay, next step is for the chuck. I'm going to grab a piece of wooden hammer. And this box was the chuck, which is actually pretty big, and the key, and the tip is spring-loaded. I can't remember what the reasoning was for that. Maybe so you can't accidentally leave it in the drill and turn it on and have that thing really injure you. The spring keeps you from being able to do that, which actually, now that I think of it, is a pretty smart thing to do. Um, it's also this here. Which I've yet to figure out what that does. I'll figure that out a bit. So, it doesn't mention it yet. Um, actually, it does. It is what goes inside the arbor, is what it is. I thought it was some sort of tool. So, um, let's see the flat part. So, Seat the chuck in the arbor in the middle of the spindle by placing a block of wood, not included, da 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 So a couple things. You are supposed to retract the three um, fingers, whatever it is, all the way so you don't damage it when you put it in. Another thing they tell you you really need to make sure of is you need to clean off um, the chuck, the hole, everything, remove all grease. Obviously, they give you put a lot of grease on it to keep it from from uh, rusting or whatever. So that's one. Put that there. There's a lot of grease on the upper side, but that's not going to cause an issue. Put this in here. Move all that out. Looks pretty clean. And one last is to. Clean out the inside here. You imagine if this thing was plugged in, I wasn't paying attention if that turned on right now. My finger would be in a lot of trouble. I would be in a lot of trouble. Okay. So, all this is going together like so. And I think it's keyed somewhere up in here. So I'm going to... Okay, hold on. So, there, there block of wood, and uh, I guess I probably shouldn't have tightened the table down yet. Let's see if it scares me half to death. What's this? Or I can actually swing it out of the way now. And give a couple of blows with the hammer. First one I really saw it move up there. I don't know how many times it says insert, seat the chuck, block of wood, da da da. Tap it with the chuck with a. Uh, I have a block of wood, so it's not a big deal. Um, so that's that. I remember my father's drill press, I didn't know that. When I would use it, the chuck would always fall down. And uh, I guess now I do know. I can't remember the minimum size drill bit needed for this. I remember reading some people said they. Uh, they were easily able to go down to maybe 330 seconds. I know there's some much better chucks that work with this. 
and um, but they were expensive, like 120 bucks. But I think this is going to be fine. I like this, this these indentations on here. I'm actually going to do two things here. I'm going to pull the power cord closer here for the drill, and I'm going to move the camera in at the same time. And I'm going to grab a pair of safety glasses and a drill bit. Is that because we're probably getting close to doing something? Let me grab a drill bit. set here. Get that, get that removal, get that removal key. Raise or lower, rotate, tilt. For tilting you need to use, loosen a bolt here. I was really hoping to have a uh, lever like one of these but maybe it can't provide the, the, uh, the tension. So looking through this, it's also like a square the table to the bit. And I'll do that later. I'm not going to use drilling big holes right now. It's just smaller holes, um, adjustments, and so forth. Um, I really want to show this on this side, but anyway. So I'm just going to grab the first drill bit, and I can actually pry out of this. This, this has a one, two, three inch throw on the hammer here. And I'm wrapping the new key. And again, it's got that spring loaded handle. And it, it occurred to me after they do that on purpose so that you don't accidentally leave it in there and leave it spinning. I noticed that. Uh, this kind of is hard to turn and wants to go back, and that's probably because the belt uh, has been in one spot so long. The other thing is, on well, it doesn't have it here, but with the motor here, the old one had a spot, and let me see if I can zoom in for you a little bit there, that you would, it was on a spring, and you would loose, pull the motor forward so you can loosen the belt and put it elsewhere. I couldn't pull it forward anymore, and I've read a couple other people with that issue. I'm not sure. Uh, why? But uh, I'm assuming this goes here, so I'm just going to do that now so I don't lose it. Um, not sure why it was an issue, but it was an issue. So let's move this up as far as we need to. It should be fine. I'm just going to tighten the table a little bit. Square the table up and things like that, but I'm not going to worry about that heavily right now. And then there's these. This is a um, looks like it's a fence, it maybe bolts right to this table or to the side. I didn't see it mentioned in there as far as the assembly instructions, so I'll be going through that. But I'm going to do a quick power up to make sure that the chuck doesn't wobble. Now, it's possible there may be some wobble simply because uh, the belt may cause a pull in the loosen, but if it's a good shaft I wouldn't think there'd be an issue. So um, I don't see a light for the a switch separate switch for the laser. I'm sure there's something here somewhere I'm just overlooking. But let's see what happens. I'm gonna put this right here so you can see the numbers on here. 510 see if I can raise this up a little bit. Bear with me. Uh, I think you can see that now. It's actually at 1420. And there isn't a lot of wobble. Well, I don't see 
much wobble on that on that uh, chuck. Now I'm gonna loosen up the handle here. I'll move the handle. Obviously that speeds it up, which is the opposite I want to do. That's 1200. Now I'm going to have to move the camera to be able to get in there to adjust that handle more. And now that's spinning slow. It's a small piece of wood. I'm not drilling metal, so I don't see any reason to have it go that slow right now, but that's all right. So, grab this. I really should have something clamping this wood down, but I'm going to do the one test. I didn't expect that to be too much of an issue. And uh, I just saw the switches now. Again, I have never seen this before, this uh, drill press. So there's two switches here. One is for the light, and that must have been on. I must have hit it out of the box, or maybe it was already like that. Um, oh my. It's kind of hard to see in there, but you can almost see the switches now. And the laser. See if the laser truly lines up with the spot it's drilling. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But let me see if it lines up. And it's kind of being out. Well, today isn't my day. Apparently, I was out of memory on the memory card when I uh, was starting to drill the first hole. So I'm going to drill it again. Uh, before I do, uh, as I mentioned, uh, before I think I get cut off, there's two switches right here. One I must have turned on inadvertently when I was uh, unpacking the drill right here. That turns on this light, and this one turns on the laser. I'm going to see how accurate it is. I'm going to turn the press back on. Um, and see, I'm going to turn the light off to see in the shot to see if it shows up any better. Some, the light on this thing is casting a really harsh shadow, or hard shadow, so it's hard to see if it's lining up right. But um, what I'm going to do is uh, take my pencil, mark an X, see, get the laser to line up with that X as best as I can. camera is uh, the way it shuts down seemed interesting almost it was like if it had a break in it or something and yes I know I shouldn't be touching the bit for two reasons it's hot and uh, something stupid could happen I turn off the laser so that's where we stand right now um, I'm gonna pause the camera for a little bit um, regroup and then I'll be back and we'll talk about the other pieces that uh, that come with this uh, drill press So nowhere in the book did it show what to do with the, uh, the I'm going to call it a fence, uh, for the table. The only place I found it was in the exploded view. Hopefully that focuses in okay right here. So um, I am going to pop that on right now while on video. Some 
one nuts. And some extra brackets and extra one nuts. So I am going to take the Explorer view and take a look to see how they think this is supposed to get, go together. And the front of the hill. I'm not sure why this would go here unless it's used as a type of a, a stop block. That's the way it looks like to me. But I guess who am I to, uh, to tell them what's right and what's wrong? But it could be some sort of stop block. Um, so, screw right here, nut and bolt, excuse me. Again, I'm not sure about the stop block thing, but there it is. You can put it on either side. And also, you have these um, wing nuts washers. I used to store this stuff down here, like the, the, the uh, chuck key and so forth from my father's drill press because it didn't have places like that. It would just slide it in there and it would fit fine. Um, but when I'm not using this, I guess what I'm going to do is uh, just set it aside and also try to make sure I don't lose any of the extra pieces like the, uh, the, uh, the wedge that removes the... Chuck. One, two, three, four. I'm going to line up this um, stop block or whatever you want to refer to it as just here so it works on all four sides and just do a test run with it. And they were wing that here and then one underneath. Wish there was a better way that they've thought about doing that. But in any case, uh, let's make sure this is in focus, which it looks like it is. And uh, I'll try this again. Still got my safety glasses on. I am going to raise the table back up. No reason to have it that far down. And of course, if I don't center this, I'm going to be going breaking a bit more than likely than anything. So. digital speedometer to level off. It's about 1270 RPMs when we go down. The stop block itself seems a little crooked. It's tilted. I'm not sure why if I don't hold it steady, so I'm just going to watch for that. Doesn't seem to be an issue. Long way when it's long way, when it's this way, and you're trying to line it up. So I guess if I was drilling a bunch of holes repetitively, this would be good. Turn that off so I can hear myself. Uh, and as we talked about earlier, or I talked about earlier. workpiece extender which is a, a nice thought I guess if you you can use it along with the stop block and this is actually a roller sometimes I've seen like on a drill uh, sorry on my uh, on my uh, DeWalt miter saw stand uh, it's a roller but the cheaper ones it's just a round piece of metal tubing or whatever so extend your workpiece whatever you need to do and uh, in the end, there are no extra parts. So that's a good thing. I'm going to shut off the light here. I am going to unplug the drill press. I hit the power switch, make sure it doesn't go on. And I'll pull this out for a second. And somewhere in here, you may not see it, but this is where you would put this wedge in 
to actually remove the uh, is that in focus there is that probably not in the right place there's a uh, slot in here and that's where you would put in this tool and you know remove the chuck I'm not going to do that it's I think it's a waste of time it looks like a really nice drill press. the only other thing I'm going to do is take this off the camera stand tripod put it around my neck because the first thing that'll be the first thing that drops and this is the uh, uh, I'll call it the height adjustment dial indicator whatever you want to refer to it as it's not really focusing well yeah, it helps a little bit but There we go. Better? Yes. So here we see one, two, and up top here is three. There's a double bolt here to lock it in place. Double bolt here. Um, pull this down. So I guess you could set the minimums and maximums like this. This I'm guessing you would never touch. I don't see, can't see any good reason you would want it to go up anymore. Um, but it does seem to be dialed in dead zero come on focus focus sorry guys I'm not directly under the light here um, one thing I've heard that someone did is they come on focus you know I regret buying this camera an EOS M is they did a little sanding right here on the orange where the it's orange on mine I know these come in a couple different colors so that uh, they could actually see the zero flush. They did a little filing here, a little filing off to the side, so that they can lower this bolt down so it sits flush, because I could feel like a little lip right here. You're probably not going to be able to see it on the camera view. There's a little lip, and I'm guessing if you were to screw that all the way down, it wouldn't hit level on there for your stop. I don't see any reason to set a, a level uh, stop right now. Um, this right here is a tension adjuster from uh, taking a quick, quick look at the cable and in the book they do show how to replace the belt um, if you do have to replace it uh, again they don't have a quick remove a, a little button here to just lift the top because there is no reason to lift the top so uh, that's my first look I don't want to call it a review I want to call it a review I don't want to call it a review, but the first look at the, the WEN 4214 um, drill press, 12 inch, uh, with a, a work light and a laser, which can be turned off and on. The laser looked pretty precise. It might have been a little bit off, but there's two Allen keys, uh, Allen holes right there, one here and one on the other side, and that would help you adjust the, the cross on the laser. Um, and right there, there's the warning, and I knew I saw it somewhere earlier before I bought it. Uh, do not change speed setting uh, without the press being on, which makes sense because you you don't want to preload it, I guess. Um, and what else? And I think that's it. Again, I apologize that the camera ran out. This happened to me one other time. That's what happens when you don't format your card beforehand. If you have any questions, please ask. Um, I haven't made a lot of videos, and I know that there's going to be a lot of criticism here, but um, that's the only way I can approve, improve, is for you to tell me things. I'm going to have this set up for a while before I just put it down out of the way, so uh, feel free to comment. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Again, thank you for watching. I know the video was long. Uh, have a great day.